It's been three years since doctors declared Jahai McMath brain dead after routine throat surgery at Children's Hospital in Oakland. And now a well-known neurologist has reviewed videos and says they prove she's still alive after all, even if her brain isn't functioning as it should. For more now, I'm joined by KTVU medical expert, Dr. Larry Burchette. Thank you for being here with us. Talk about this difficult topic. First, let's kind of get into the criteria for brain death. Yeah, so there's three main things that have to be present in order for you to diagnose brain death. Number one is that the patient has to be in a coma, mm -hmm. which means a non-responsive state, brain response to stimuli, such as verbal, like talking to them, touch, or pain. So if you, if you do those stimuli and they don't respond, that's number one. Number two is, uh, I'm forgetting on the, two, on the two of them for a second. Number one is coma. Number two is um, the neurologic, ref the brainstem reflexes, mm -hmm. such as the corneal reflex, where you touch your cornea and your eyes blink, and your gag reflex. Those can't be present. Right. And then the third one is what we call the apnea test, right. or that uh, the patient can't breathe on their own. So brain if you have all three of those present and there's no irreversible cause and their temperature's been corrected and things like that, then you diagnose brain death. And all three of those have been present for Jahai, correct? So in the past, a couple years ago when this was initially done, yes, those were present. Now, this is controversial now because this new UCLA neurologist is weighing in and saying, well, maybe she isn't in fact in a coma. Maybe there's meaningful response to verbal stimuli. I think they said basically She's been kind responding of, to commands, right? Yeah. Saying, I think her mother was quoted saying something about, you know, put your, your, the bad finger up, the, the middle finger, and she raised her middle finger is what we've heard. Right, so that would call you to question, you know, is she really in a coma? In which case she may not meet the brain death criteria and then you have this kind of dilemma. Philosophically though, and this is kind of big here, you know, what does this mean to be alive? Uh, you know, and how does it pertain to Jahai's case? That's a really good question. So, you know, a normal person, our brains, our hearts are working, but what if, your brain doesn't work, but your heart is still beating. Are you alive? Right. You know, I think that's a great philosophical question. And then in this case, to take it a little further, what if you have a little bit of brain activity? Not enough for really a meaningful existence, mm -hmm. but are you really alive then? It, it really poses some difficult questions that you can't answer with law. You kind of, you know, it goes beyond medicine. It really gets into kind of philosophy and ethics. I think what many parents, uh, you know, a parent like myself and like yourself, I know you have a daughter as well. Uh, when you when you hear stuff like this, you hear situations like this, and, and sometimes it just seems so rare. Um, a little girl going into surgery for, I believe, tonsillitis, throat surgery at Children's Hospital, and and ending up in this kind of state, parents wonder, what is the what risks am I taking sending my child into surgery? There's always risks, right? There's always risk with surgery, and certainly it's normal to worry, especially when you see cases like this. I want to say the numbers are one in a hundred thousand of complications of anesthesia being this serious. It's really rare. What's being struck by lightning? Like one in a million, something like that. Yeah. But you always have to ask the question, you know, are the potential risks of dying, of complications, are those outweighed by the benefits like getting your tonsils out? I think most of the time we say yes, it is safe, but unfortunately with cases like this, this is still, you know, true. There is still a small risk of something like this happening as, as tragic as it really is. Right. We'll have to see what happens. I believe that she's been on life support for three years now. Her parents, obviously, this is a great sign of hope for them, but just another step along the way to see what happens in this long process already. Dr. Burchette, we thank you for being here to talk to us about it. Thank you. Thank you.